Politicians on the campaign trail are prone to make all sorts of promises. Many of them are never fulfilled. I know you're shocked. Our own Governor John Kasich in New Hampshire has promised as part of his bid for the White House that should he win, he would make it his top priority to, to reunite one of the most iconic bands of the 70s. And if I'm president, I am going to once and for all try to reunite Pink Floyd to come together and play a couple songs. Thank you, John Kasich, for getting right to the heart of what voters are most concerned about in New Hampshire today. Since we have so much trouble in America with our finances, I'm going to start with a little sh little song they, they created called Money. Thanks, Gov. Can't wait to get you back in Columbus, man. <laughs> Debbie Georgianos is back with us here on uh, the Scott Show News Radio 1370. How late were you up watching uh, caucus returns last night, Debbie? Well, it was well after midnight. I will tell you, when uh, Hillary Clinton started giving her speech, my husband said, I cannot listen to this. <laughs> so he, he gave up. But uh, it was after midnight, and um, I kept thinking we'd get a final word on the Democrat side. And when I went to bed, they hadn't done it. No, uh, as of about two hours ago, I think they officially called it for, for Hillary, although it's, it's really by you know, four-tenths of a percent. Yes, it's, that was actually among the biggest news of the whole night, is that really in a state where... Um, it looked like Hillary would be fine. Bernie Sanders was able to turn out a lot of support and people who were just, uh, you know, they have colleges there, and that's certainly part of it. And have been early polls saying that the Democrat voters in Iowa, it was some crazy thing, like over 40% considered themselves socialists. So maybe that was a good friendly state for him, but that was a big surprise. Yeah, but, and he also did well in, in some of the uh, more urban areas as well, although there are not many urban areas in Iowa. But he did okay around, uh, around Des Moines and Davenport as well as in the college towns. He really did. And, you know, I've said, I can't remember if I said it in your show before, but I really think it would be healthy for the American political conversation to have Bernie Sanders be the Democrats' candidate because we need to openly talk about what socialism really is, what it does, how people suffer under socialism. We just have uh, people unaware of the outcome of socialism other than thinking somehow the stuff I want will be free. Well, it's also kind of interesting to watch Hillary Clinton dur during her address last night, which uh, originally, I guess, had been planned as an acceptance speech or, or at least a, a victory speech. It seemed to me like she made a, a little bit of a pivot even more to the left, which is hard to get even more to the left of where she already was, but perhaps in a nod to, to the success of Bernie Sanders, she was she was saying some of the same things that Bernie had been saying. She wasn't. You know, I um, I thought it was odd to watch her, and I'm sorry if it sounded a smart aleck, my husband's saying I don't want to watch her, but she seemed more angry, and she, I think in many speeches, seems angry, but the speech last night was even more, had a defiant and, and angry tone, and didn't have a um, I just thought she did not leave the impression of being an upbeat, positive, this is a person to go with. I thought it was a very off-putting speech. Well, uh, and you're right. I mean, I, I disagree with, I would say, 95%, 99% of everything Bernie Sanders has to say. But he is true to form. He's never wavered in his political belief and his, and his philosophy throughout his entire career. And, and he does paint a, an optimistic pic picture of a socialist America. He does. And, you know, among the things that are just, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but at one point when Bernie Sanders was talking about a tax plan and talking about what the, uh, how they would end up making college free for everyone, it was something in the range of the additional spending that his plan would involve that was almost equal to our national debt. It was 17 or 18 trillion involved in his whole spending plan. And this ties to something I think we talked about before. I love being on your show, by the way. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, it's just this economic ignorance among young voters especially, where they just somehow, somebody, if they just wave the right magic wand, can make all the financial stuff that costs money be free and, and nothing, no bad consequence will flow. I just, um, so I honestly think if Sanders were to win the nomination, it would be a great time for America to really dive in and understand what socialism has done around the world. Well, the problem is, especially with some of Bernie Sanders' young supporters, is that the, the idea of getting everything for, for free is, is very appealing, and, and they don't have to worry about the cost because it's not their money. It's somebody else's money. 
And as Margaret Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is you eventually run out of other people's money. Absolutely true. And you know what? I did an interesting, uh, earlier today I was on a, a different show and one of the callers called in to say, gee, you know, when George Bush, George H.W. Bush ran and he said, I promise no new taxes, and then he raised them, to, you know, read my lips, no taxes, and then he raised them, he lost in his renomination, and then contrast that with, because he raised taxes, and then now we have Bernie Sanders, I know there are two different parties, we have Bernie Sanders, some of his tax levels are about 90% for some people, and this guy was saying, why, how could America be falling for this? And I said, well, because the people falling for Sanders are not the ones earning the money. They're not the ones who are going to be paying those taxes, the ones who think they're going to get, the people who think they get the free things from him. Well, and, and that's one thing you got to love about Bernie, even if you don't agree with him, is he's un, uh, unapologetic about how much he is willing to tax people. Uh, uh, you know, he's talking about 80 90%, as you say, on the upper uh, income earners. He is, and you know, I, I do think there is an honesty about him that is not present in many of the leaders in the Democrat side today. And much of what the candidates talk about, not just in the GOP race, but in Washington, it's they don't say they're socialists because they know that's not politically acceptable in many circles. But it is shifting the role of government from protecting the borders, national defense, uh, you know, keeping keeping Americans safe, to a redistributionist model, which is socialism. At least Bernie Sanders is honest. You, got, you do have to hand him that. Well, I, and I think Bernie Sanders is actually more honest than many Republican candidates as well who have been, who have been secretly pushing forward their progressive agenda uh, at the same time that they're professing to be conservatives. Yes, there, there is no shortage of hypocrisy in Washington. That's a true story. <laughs> yeah, were you, uh, were you surprised by Ted Cruz's victory last night? You know, to, be, to tell you the truth, I had I did think he would win, and uh, I know most people didn't think that. The only reason I would say that is because I am in Texas. I know a, a lot of people involved in this campaign. That campaign is so organized up there and so enthusiastic. I, I know people who were up, in fact, on my radio show this past Sunday, I had some of the a Ted Cruz caucus goer call in and talk about what was going to be happening on Monday. And, you know, I think the enthusiasm for him was really uh, is palpable in his followers, and it just had more substance to it to me than the, than the enthusiasm about Donald Trump, which has kind of just a um, what's the right word for it? It's just a you know kind of fanfare. Big, I love being on the winning team, but I, I think Ted had he earned that victory through hard work. And the one thing I'll say, and I'd love to talk about any other subjects you'd like to, but I really think. Ted taking an ethical position, Ted Cruz taking an ethical, what well, he views a principal position on ethanol, it kind of resonated with serious thinkers that he would go to a state like Iowa and say, we can't continue the ethanol subsidy, even after the governor said we have to. I, I think that resonated as kind of a genuineness coming from him. Well, it, it is kind of unusual uh, to go to Iowa and, and say that. And in fact, last Thursday or Friday, I was explaining the way the, that the caucus system works and made the prediction that Ted Cruz would win and explained why Ted Cruz would win. Unfortunately, I also had to explain that Ted Cruz is going to pick up some of these states, but I, I also don't believe that he is the most electable candidate. I, I don't think Donald Trump is electable either, regardless of who the Democratic nominee is, but I worry long term about the electability of Ted Cruz on a national level against either Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or even Joe Biden. Wow. Well, you know, this is interesting because that is obviously in the back of a lot of primary voters' thought is, you know, which candidate do I honestly like, and then which candidate do I really think could be uh, any, whoever it is on the American, on the Democrat side and the left. And, you know, I just, I think that Hillary is a very flawed candidate, and I think that if she doesn't get indicted over this FBI stuff, which she may, or the uh, emails, which she may or may not, I think that's going to be a bigger and bigger issue, not I think the Republicans and her opponents have the task of making it clear this isn't just a push the wrong button on my computer and wrong, use the wrong email file kind of, um, you know, paperwork error. This is something that actually exposed American national security assets, CIA operatives, and place, people we have placed in other countries, put their actual identity at risk in her uh, unsecured email. So I think... I think she's a weakened candidate, and so I think there'd be a lot of Democrat voters that won't care, but the broad spectrum of America looking at that and thinking she's 
you know, she did that for years, and she kept it on her private server for two years. I think that's really going to bother people more than, uh, maybe more than her uh, other scandals in her life. I think it's a... <laughs> Yeah, so pick, pick a scandal. Which one is going to is going to affect her the most? With her supporters and with Democrats, it's really not going to matter. I'm afraid. I would agree. I saw a poll recently that there are only 19 percent of uh, likely Democrat voters who even think that Hillary did anything wrong on her email at all. They just they think most of them think it's a non-issue. But you know, you look at those people, the famous independent voters or broad swap swap undecided. To me, those are. It's, that's just a, your number one job as president is national security. I, I, I just think it's going to bother people more than it does now. Um, I, you know, I don't think she'll be indicted, but I think that her conduct and, and her the series of layers of lies that went on over the months, I, I think it will bother people. So I don't know. I, I, I actually do think Ted Cruz, I think the, the people on the um, GOP side, I would have to think long and hard who I think could not be Hillary. I really do think Hillary, I think it's going to be a GOP victory in the fall. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell your listeners and you. I saw this great thing that may make all of us feel excited. There is this enthusiasm gap among GOP comparing GOP voters versus Democrat voters. Have you talked about that today? No, I haven't seen that yet. It's really a cool thing. It's a new survey by this R-I-P-O-N, Ripon Society, there's an 11-point gap in intensity favoring Republicans. And they go back historically and talk about, you know, a lot of outcomes in elections are really determined by which party is more determined to get out and, and elect their side. And this year, the GOP is way up, as they were, and they did this before the 2010 midterms, the 2014 midterms. In both cases, there was a big gap. It is even bigger in this 2016. So I think there's things that President Obama's conduct of American policy over the last seven years has left many people, I, I think a lot of people say, whoever it is on the GOP side, I'm going to go with because I don't want more of Obama's policies. I think we saw some of that enthusiasm last night in, in Iowa when we had record turnouts for, well, and, and you could say, you could make the argument that we saw record turnouts for the Democratic primaries as well, but for the Republicans last night, uh, more votes were cast for, uh, for number one and number two for Ted Cruz and Donald Trump than any previous top two tier uh, in, in the Iowa caucuses. So there was a, a large uh, voter turnout for, for last night's caucus. However, uh, you could you could make the same argument that turnout was just as great for the Democrats. It was, and you know it's very interesting. I'll be curious as the turnout we they continue the primary schedule into New Hampshire. Will the Democrat excitement parallel the Republican turnout excitement? Because I do think I think the direction of the country, the it's not just a measure of the national debt, but the sense that America doesn't feel secure, that the border isn't secure, that the president is doing things that don't seem like consistent with America's best foreign policy interests. I think there are just a lot of Americans saying, I want you to make us feel safe. And that's mostly on the GOP side. So I don't know why I cannot account for the big Democrat turnout in Iowa. But my guess going along is it's the Republicans who are, are, very, are, are very concerned. We still have a big field. It looks like hopefully it will winnow down after New Hampshire and maybe a few more primaries. But um, I think the... the um, Intensity of concern is very real on the GOP side. Yeah, I think uh, coming out of New Hampshire, it, it will be a four-way race at that point. I think it will be Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, Marco Rubio, and either John Kasich, Jeb Bush, or, or uh, Chris Christie. It, it will be one of the governors and, and the top three candidates from Iowa. Uh, Dr. Carson, up in the air. I don't know how he's going to do coming out of New Hampshire, but I think coming out of next week's primary, it will be a four-person race. Oh, I do, too, and I actually kind of look forward to that. I think it's easier for voters to think. But um, I know John Kasich, and, and, you know, he's uh, in New Hampshire. I, I'm looking at the real clear rolling polling data. Uh, you know, his, uh, the most recent, I think, is at 11.5. So there's a real um, – Kasich is one who didn't uh, do well in – Iowa, but in New Hampshire, he's way up. He's right up there. And I, I, I seem honestly incumbent on some of the people who just don't haven't done well in the polls and can't get a really good showing very, very soon in some primary. It, it's incumbent on them to, to step aside and let the you know, let the field narrow. I think yeah. Carly Fiorina, Rand Paul, 
Dr. Carson, and the Huckabees uh, got out. Uh, Rick Santorum, Rick Jim Gilmore. There's plenty of people who have uh, who have <laughs> have room to, to drop off and give uh, their one percent to somebody else. Yes, and you know, among those, I would say I think that Rubio really stood out as the um, more establishment side candidate last night. I think that it was kind of Jeb Bush's night to prove that he was the best establishment person and, and didn't 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 register with the voters in Iowa. I do think if it continues along the trend of last night, they're going to have Bush is going to have to step out at some point. He'll be he'll, he'll have the hardest time doing it right. because of his history. But uh, Governor Christie, uh, his voters, will, I would guess, go to Rubio. But I think like Ben Carson's and Rand Paul, the arenas, the Chantorms, that those voters are all um, outside the mainstream. They're they're not going to go for Rubio or, um, or or Jeb Bush if he were to stay in. I think they're more likely to go with Cruz. Debbie, uh, Debbie Giorgiano's LadiesCanWeTalk.org is your website on Twitter, at Debbie Can we talk? We will talk, I'm sure, after the New Hampshire primaries next week.